Give me time. Give me time, because trust me when I tell you this, I'm the greatest of all time. You know what I mean? And um, I will prove it over time. I, I feel confident going in against any man. Any man, as, as Chael P said, any, any man God made, you know what I mean? And not only that, I'll whoop God as well. It's in my head 24-7. There's nothing else I can think. I don't. I don't think about nothing else. If if let's see, I'm just curious, curiously fascinated with it, and I can't stop thinking about it. Everything I do in my life is is related to this. I don't do nothing else if it's not got to do with fighting. You know what I mean? And that that, that is why. You know what I mean? To, to be true. Is that to nearly, all, all, all you've got to do is show up. Is that not unhealthy? Um, I don't know. Do I look unhealthy? Take a look at this physique. I'm in phenomenal shape in body and mind. To me, what's unhealthy is living an unhealthy life. To me, what's unhealthy is getting up and going through the same day, every day of your life, nine to five, in an office or in a, you know what I mean? That, that's unhealthy. That beats your mind. I don't, I don't work. I, what do I, I love what I do. And that's why I'm doing what I love. You know what I mean? That's why, that's why it's become a career for me because I love it. I love what I do. So I don't think it's unhealthy. I, I, I feel good in my mind. You know what I mean, it's, it's, my, it's my life. Stripping that all back to start your career, a man with a dream, um, you know, training in the gym day in, day out. If somebody said to you, you'll have or you'll be as successful as you are now, what would you have said back then? <clears throat> I believe you. That's what I would have said. <laughs> because I did believe. Yes. Yeah, I believed in it. I, I had very few people who told me that. I had a small, 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 group of people that would tell me something like that. Other than that, it was just me telling myself. Yep. So if someone came up to me and told me that all the way back then, I'd say you're damn right. Knocked them out, I picked around John. Yeah, I said this, I'm sure you are probably all thinking in your head, this guy is talking absolute dribble. He's not gonna do what he says he's gonna do. You are probably all sitting there thinking that. But now here we are again, and I done what I said I was gonna do. I feed off this, I feed off this. I love this stuff. This is what gives me energy. Saying I'm gonna do something. Saying, putting it out there for the world to see and then going out and doing it. There's no better feeling in the world than that. And it's as easy as that. Say what you're gonna do and go and do it. I'm not gonna stare at it. You stare at your past and you'll end up staying there. It's okay to look back and admire it, but you carry on. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in the business of staring, staring back at it. You know what I mean? I'm getting lost back there. It's people say you can, people say a loss can make or break a fighter. But trust me, a win can also make or break a fighter because they get comfortable with a with a win. People can get comfortable with a, with a win, and 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 slack off then, slack off on the training, slack off on the diet. They've won one. They're winners now. That's not me. You know, you sleep on a you sleep on a win and you'll wake up with a loss. So I just carry on. Keep doing what I'm doing. And that's why this turnaround is so good for me. Vegas, straight away. The fighting Irish head to the fighting capital. It's, it's perfect. Continue on this path. The freight train, straight to the top. When you're chasing your dream and when you're, when you're working hard, chasing something you love and, and, um, and completely dedicated, it just, it just happens. You don't, you don't, you can't really no, notice it, you know, even still to this day. I'm in, a, in an amazing position in, in my life, um, but I'm still, I'm still working like I'm not. I'm still working like I'm not in this position. Absolutely. I'm still working like none of this is even, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, I just, it's just something I love to do and I just keep pushing and keep working hard. I can't pinpoint an exact moment for you, but yep. if, if anything, I always felt like it was happening way back then. And, and now it is happening, but now I almost feel like it's not happening. You know what I mean? And I want to, I want to push to, to something else. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm always striving to push forward. So every gym I went to was always, they had a set way. Every gym had a set way of doing things. Don't do it this way. Do it that way. So that was just a normal thing that I thought. I thought just people just have their own set way, and you must do it that way. You must stand this way. You must kick this way. You must punch this way. But with John, when I went to John. And I met, met my coach John Cabinet at Straight Blast Gym. It wasn't like that. He had a more open mind and he encouraged different movements. And I'd never experienced that before. I'd never heard a coach say that to me before. And that stuck in my head. You know, I thought to myself, you know, this guy is, is, is thinking outside the box. You know what I mean? That he has a vision that everything works and, and he, he encourages every movement because ultimately 
There is a time and a place for every single move. So I just, ha I just knew when, when I met John and I, when he spoke, it made complete sense to me. And that was it, I stuck with him and he stuck with me. And I've been listening to laughter all my career. Yeah. I've been listening to them laugh my whole career. They've been laughing. What, an Irish man win a, win a Cage Warriors world title? Hell no. You serious, an Irish man? An Irish man win a fight in the UFC? Hell no, laugh, laughs all around. An Irish, okay, you gotta win. Now he wants to win a world title? Hell no, he's all talk, he's all hype, he's a joke. Laughter all around at the Joker. Then the Joker goes and wins the world title. Now he wants to win a second world title. More laughter. Listen, I've been, I don't know, mate, the sound of laughter and the sound of doubt motivates me. So, I'm, I'm enjoying that, I seek that. I don't feel no doubt or, or, or I don't feel no, I don't feel that going to fight in any of these other UFC bombs right now. They need to rise up. Right now they're, they're down there. I've got this situation where people are truly doubting me like they doubted me at the very, very beginning. And that's motivating for me. That's what's going to drive me to the gym when I need to go to the gym and to put in that work to get that win. So that's where we're at right now. You're looking at the current king, Ariel. You're interviewing the current king. Um, the current king is here. July 10th, the current king will be there, 145 pounds. July 11th, the current king will be there, raising gold. So, I don't care. It, it's the McGregor show. Let's be honest. It would be great to have it with all the work they put in, but I cannot force an individual if they are afraid. If an individual is afraid to fight, you cannot force him. So it, it is what it is. If he if he's running, if he's scared, there's nothing I can do. I'd probably if I sometimes I look in the mirror and get little frights as well, looking at myself because I am an absolute animal, a machine. So I probably wouldn't want to fight me either. So it is what it is. I'll be there. I know that. They say I'm just talk, but here I am walking. Where's where's everybody else? My experiences in, in, in Cage Wars and, and all the other promotions, not just all the promotions before that as well, it helped prepare me for, mm -hmm. for, for certain situations that you'd find yourself in. But you're talking, even fighting in the UFC and then fighting on a McGregor show in the UFC is, is leaps and bounds different. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So um, everything has been a learning experience for me and I, and I take everything as a, as, a, as a learning experience and I look to grow from it. And, sure. and, and you know what? That's why I keep growing. And you're enjoying great riches and success now, but can you put yourself in the mindset of the guy who's waiting in line with other people? Always. I'm. Do you hard. remember what that guy Always. was thinking? I'm Were you daydreaming of this? Was that even possible? Every second of every day I was daydreaming. But of course I can go back and think there. You know, that's, I, I live there in my head. You know what I mean? I always be there. You know, I, I show up and work every single day like I'm not in the position I'm in. Like I'm not me. So that's the mindset I have. And it's it's. Work. Obviously, you were due to make history by fighting Rafael dos Anjos. That didn't happen, and now you fight Eddie. Is Eddie an easier route to history? I think that's something your coach, um, Kevin, has said. Uh, I think they're very similar. I think they're all the same. They're all, you know, even looking at the contenders that fought last week, like they're not. I, I almost feel like upset that they're even being mentioned. In, in you talking about Tony Ferguson? Everyone, all of them. They're all, like, they're all way, way down. Like there's, I, I look at these fights and I realize why the game has never broke into that next level before because nobody's at that next level. I'm the only one at that next level. So I look forward to going out and showing what I know that these people do not stand a chance. You're working in the plumbing business? I, I was working in the plumbing business at, at, at the time, yeah, but um, I'm trying to think. It, was, it would have been around that time that John um, no, see, I had left the plumbing business. I left the plumbing business. How bad was that? The plumbing? Yeah. Horrendous. Was it, were you actually in the trenches? I mean, it was an industrial. Ooh. So it'd be like building this. It'd be like the plumbing that would be needed in a place like this, six o'clock in the morning, and, and the motorway. And I used to have to walk for about an hour to get to the, to get to the motorway, and then I'd stand on the edge of the motorway and wait for a bloke to drive by. So he'd give me a lift, and then the, the motorway was like getting um, renovation at the time, so it'd take me two hours, two and a half hours to get to the place. It was out in the country. Then I'd be there for 10 hours walking, and I was a first year, so I was the worst of the worst, and wow. I was only beginning. Then two hours to get back in the traffic again. It was just a horrible, horrible time, and I was like, you know what? I don't want to deal with this, and then I just left, and then I just stopped going, didn't get out of bed. Then my dad would come in and try and bait me out of bed, and we'd have 
fights and literally for, for a good while I never spoke, I didn't really speak to my dad, we just kind of stayed away from each other. Anytime, I, anytime I'd come across my dad, I just, anytime we did speak was, was to fight. He, he, you lived in his house? Yeah, I was only 18, 17, 18. But you 18. didn't talk to him? Isn't that kind of awkward? Yeah, well, not, not like it wasn't, whatever, you know. We, you yeah. didn't have a, a, just a deep relationship? Yeah, no, yeah, no, mm. but, but since this, since this has happened, right. since the dream has happened, since the vision that I had has come true, and like he went through, he went through a tough time as well because he got testicular cancer. Oh. So he, he got sick and all over it. And I, in my head I was thinking, maybe maybe I, I, I done that because he's worried about me and doesn't know what I'm gonna do and all these fights that we're having all the time. And like I'm talking full on fights, you come in and punch it. And we're really? going at it, yeah, we're, go, we're going at and it. And you're punching back. Well, yeah, we, we, we're going at it, yeah. Wow, and what does your mom say about that, who's so protective of you? Yeah, I mean, well, it's, she's, I don't know, it was, it was just, she just stayed out, you know, but... Um, but well, since, why did he get to that point to where he was that mad? Because I was doing, I was doing absolutely nothing. Was I was out getting into in trouble. Yeah, basically, felt like I was doing fuck all. I was a waster. You know what I mean? I, got, I was a waster. Got that, called that a lot. You know what I mean? But, <clears throat> but now, like, and then, and then when, when I start getting that focus and realizing, no, fuck, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this happen. And then now that has happened, I'm, I'm, I'm making it happen. I have a great relationship with my dad. Like we talk all the time, and I even see energy in them, and I see energy in me ma. Like it's depressing times for a lot of people in Ireland. There's a lot of bad stuff going on in, in, in the country. A lot of people are struggling. Everybody's struggling. But now since, since them seeing me chase this dream, it's given them an energy, and, and, I, and I see a new lease of life in them. And that alone spurs me on even more. So it's all just a perfect storm that is happening for me. And that is why I have this tunnel vision and that is why I'm willing to kill every single man in my path to get that belt, you know what I mean? To, to secure the future, from my family's future. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I'm doing it for. When I was a kid, I used to always visualize stadiums. And, and like, even when I was playing football, I'd kick the ball against the wall and I'd, I'd pretend I scored a goal and I'd run off and I'd be, raising my hand and visualizing a arena full of fans. You know, that, that was something I'd done as a kid out, out on my own. I like just running around kicking the ball. So I always had these visions of something, but I just didn't know what it was. And then I suppose when I came to this, uh, these events and I started training them and then came to an event, I was like, okay, this is it. This is, this is what I'm gonna do. Hard work pays. I put in a hell of a lot of work all throughout this build up in the fight. I pumped out more content than anybody, more content than Fox, more content than ESPN, more content than B uh, BT Sport, more content than everybody on the Mag Live on my own channels. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a fucking workhorse from all angles, not just in the gym. But I'm building this media empire now myself, and we pumped out the content. I'm very proud of how it went. We consistently daily movies I was releasing, you know, from from like a month ago, every single day, you know what I mean? Nobody's doing that. So I'm very proud of it and, and I'm very, like, the work pays, hard work pays and we put, I put in the fucking work and that's that's why I'm, I'm sitting at the top. I, I put it all on the line, I show up, I perform and I get the results from that, so. You're at your past and you'll end up staying there. It's okay to look back and admire it, but you carry on. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in the business of staring, staring back at it. You know what I mean? And getting lost back there. Just people say you can, people say a loss can make or break a fighter. But trust me, a win can also make or break a fighter because they get comfortable with a, with a win. People can get comfortable with a, with a win. And, and, and slack off then. Slack off on the training, slack off on the diet. They've won one. They're winners now. That's not me, you know, you sleep, on a, you sleep on a win and you'll wake up with a loss. So I just carry on, keep doing what I'm doing. And that's why this turnaround is so good for me. Vegas, straight away, the fighting Irish head to the fighting capital. It's, it's perfect. Continue on this path, the freight train straight to the top. Keep seeking more. We keep, you know, they tell me, tell me you'll never do this. You'll never win, win world titles. I've done it consecutively. So we keep pushing the pushing the envelope. Keep keep going. So um, I'm almost I conquer one, and then I'm on to the next. So I, I I work and I hustle like like I'm not in the position I'm in. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm set. I love proving people wrong and proving my support right. That's what it's about at the end of the day. You know, this is this is all fun and games to me. I love it. I love my job. I whoop people for truckloads of cash.
How could I hate this life? I love it so much. I am grateful every single day. I don't know, the Irish people might understand more. A, a, young, a young boy dreaming of putting on the Irish jersey or, or yeah, dreaming of putting on his, his favourite ball team's uh, jersey and that crest and lifting that cup, you know, this, this is my crest. These gloves right here, these UFC gloves, you know. To be the first man, to be the first Irish man to put these on, to lace these up and, and get in and do the job. Uh, honestly, no one can take that away from me. No matter what. I'm good, honestly, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I don't care about nothing else. I don't know about nothing else. You know I mean? Don't even listen to it. If I start talking about something else, just don't listen. Don't just, I'm talking shit. But if I talk about this, if I talk about unarmed combat, if I talk about the human anatomy, you know what I mean? The way the human body moves. Do you ever have, let's call it a normal job, Connor, mm -hmm. a nine to five? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, the Irish thing is to get into a trade straight away. I was no different. As soon as uh, I finished school, I was always getting pestered. What are you doing with your life? You're doing this, doing that. Um, they didn't know what it was. They didn't know what MMA was. They didn't know what none of this. They didn't know I could make a career out of it. As far as they were concerned, my man and I'm talking about, as far as they were concerned, I was just getting into a cage and fighting with some other guy. They didn't know nothing about it. No one did, really. But I knew. You know what I mean? I knew. But, uh, um, and then I, got a, I ended up getting a trade just to keep them quiet. Because I used to get, have a lot, lot of fights with me dad. A lot of what fights. trade did you get? I ended up getting a trade as a plumber. Um, literally up in the back arse and nowhere up in Wicklow, the Wicklow Mountains. And funny enough, that, that, that site was one of the biggest sites in Europe, Kiltiernan. It was right at that skiing place. Huge. And now it's just abandoned. Now it's just deserted. So I used to go up there at 6 o'clock, five, 5 o'clock in the morning I was on that M50. I used to have to walk to the N4 about half an hour from my house, wait for some Limerick guy that I didn't even know. He'd drive on the N4 and I'd have to flag him down. Nightmare, yeah, two hours down on the M50, two hours back, literally 14 hour days, and I was the, I was the first year, so I, was the, I had to go and do everything. I had to go to the shop, I had to go and get this and get that. So I always had trouble with that, and I was like, this isn't for me, this is not for me. How and long then, did you last? Uh, I lasted 18, 18 months, still. Only. But it was tough, you know what I mean? Uh, just, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't the life for me, you know what I mean? And then, and then John said, because I was training with John as well at the time, and then John got on touch and says, uh, I have a show, I'm running a show, I'd like to fight on it. And then that was it. I just packed it in, didn't show up. My dad used to come in and punch the head on me and, and like try and drag me out of bed. And I just wouldn't go, you know what I mean? I had an uproar for a good few years when I'm over but, um, And that was it, I just pa packed it in, quit, and then focused on training. And that's, I knew, I knew, I knew what was gonna happen. I knew I was gonna get here. They didn't. It was a lot of stressful years, you know what I mean? A lot of tough times, um, but I proved them wrong. I proved myself right. It's important that you put a conscious, uh, a conscious effort into appreciating your surroundings, you know what I mean? That's what I do with this place. I absolutely love this city. And even, you know what? I was thinking a lot about Norman Park the other, yesterday after that thing happened, where he was saying about Northern Ireland and they, it's a disgrace and it's this and it's that. It's, it's a negative thing towards your home mm. nation or, or whatever, you know? But that's not the right way to be. You need to have a, you know, you need to appreciate your surroundings and be grateful for it. And, and that's when good things happen, you know what I mean? But to have that bitterness and that negativity, then, then things start going bad, you know what I mean? So I, I think the fact that I have them thoughts and that, the fact that I, I appreciate everything and I'm grateful for, for, for the things around me and the, the way things are going, that is why, that's why it's going so good for me.